long did it take to put it all together? Yeah, so um, I had a short film that was like six pages that I'd written that was very, very loosely based off of um, one of my uncle's stories that he would tell at Thanksgiving every year. And it was just sort of this really great nugget of a story that the summer of 2011, I gathered a group of friends. We raised, I think, like five grand and went out and shot it. And that little nugget of a story um, ended up at Sundance. It was my first thing in Sundance. I literally, when we got the acceptance, I literally fell to my knees and just started sobbing and saying it was my turn. Um, so we all went to Sundance with the short film, but in the meantime, um, I was like, when we get to Park City, I should have a feature ready to talk about. And um, so the fall leading up to going to Park City with the short film, I just wrote, I went down to Southeast Texas where uh, we kind of set the feature and just started literally talking to everyone, interviewing people, just sort of living and breathing in the world as much as I could. And fast forward about a year later, or I guess it was like 20, what year did we shoot it? 2013, summer of 2013, I think. We shot it in Southeast Texas. Um, I wanna say, God, it's been so long, 26 days maybe? It was maybe a 27th day, half a million dollar budget. Um, it was just real ragtag. I was teaching at the University of Texas at the time, had a lot of students that worked on the film. Um, yeah, it was really, I mean, again, like what's so beautiful about indie films like this is you are like scraping together every dollar, you're begging for every favor. Um, literally our producer's parents were cooking meals and letting everybody stay at their house. Uh, it, that that is the magical experience that you have on these small indie films that you're years later chasing to have that magic again. Um, but yeah, I, Johnny, anything like that? All feels <laughs> right. I mean, timeline wise, I, I don't remember yesterday to be honest. So. <laughs> You know, if we're gonna start talking about, I mean, it's like the pandemic's kind of wiped everything out, you know, at this point. Yeah. But that all sounds good. You know, what's insane is uh, two things. One, I did not realize how little money uh, we had to make that movie. Uh, really? I did not realize it was it was only five hundred thousand. But then beyond that, I didn't realize we made the short for five grand. That seems like nothing. That's amazing. Both of the oh, on both accounts uh, for what was uh, for what you pulled off on both of those for such little funding is. Uh, remarkable so yeah congratulations <laughs> you were there really oh yeah no I, hey, I, I mean i wasn't <laughs> i worked a few days i'm just saying like i just can't believe uh i mean that's great that's awesome that's a testament to like the, you know everybody chipping in i don't know but that was cool i like hearing that about that. and well five hundred thousand dollars is is a little budget for uh some people we're talking to a lot of emerging filmmakers in the room who are still in college and um, and I know that you've made several feature, you made two features for, uh, before this and a lot of shorts. Um, can you talk a little bit about putting together that budget? I mean, was it your producers just pitching to 10 different financing sources or, or how exactly did you put that together? Yeah, I mean, the two features prior to, like no one's, very few people have seen them. One lives on a VHS tape in a closet somewhere that we made for $5,000 on a Canon XL1 in the summer of 1999. The second one was shot for like $100,000 on 16 millimeter. It played at South by Southwest and then did a little bit of a, a mini tour. Um, so the, the half a million with Hellion, um, indie film is hard. We, you know, sort of the package of the film was we had had two shorts at Sundance. Kelly Williams, our producer, had gone through the Creative Producers Lab at Sundance. Um, we had gotten a San Francisco Film Society grant for all of our post-production. Uh, or no, that was prior to, sorry. Um, we had Aaron Paul attached, we had Juliette Lewis attached, and we still struggled to get our money. I think we started at budgeting it around like 750 to a million. 
and then we ended up dropping it. We went to LA, we did the whole rounds with production companies, you know, doing the whole song and dance pitch to all of the financiers. No one would finance it. Um, we ended up getting, a, you know, like 50 grand from one investor, 50 grand from another investor, and then the $400,000 we ended up giving, getting from um, two uh, family, mem not family members, they're family members of each other, but these two investors from Texas, um, one of which just was a huge Aaron Paul fan and knew some friends. But I will say one of my favorite stories is that um, we were probably a week from going down to Southeast Texas to go shoot the film or to do prep. We didn't have our money and it was sort of that like do or die situations where we're gonna pull the plug and you know on indie features when you pull the plug you don't know if you're ever really gonna go back to make the film. So I went to breakfast with a friend of mine David Zellner who is him and his brother Nathan are wildly talented filmmakers um, who did Kamiko and Damsel and all these great films and I was like just so bummed that we were probably gonna get our the plug pulled on this feature and David just gave me this really beautiful pep talk like you guys you just gotta do it you gotta figure it out and so I literally like got on the phone and emailed like anybody and everybody I knew and I would say within like 48 hours we had promise of the four hundred thousand dollars left and but it was you know it was come hell or high water we were going to make this film like you if you just have that like just die hard passion that you're gonna do it come hell or high water um it'll happen but at the end of the day like you are your biggest champion of your work and your art and have to fight like mad and ask a gazillion people for help even though it's hard to ask for help uh so yeah i forget what the question was but i hope that was the no, answer that was fantastic um i have one more question we can open it up to the audience after that and i can i have plenty more if if people are shy um i mean you've had a lot of success with the sundance shorts and we in Though, uh, though you were saying not many people had seen the previous features, I mean, you made two other features. Can you talk a little bit about the doors that were open because of the short, both of you, both Johnny and Kat, I'd love to hear if it affected your life in any way and how, how it did. Oh my God, yeah. I mean, the reason I started going back to shorts after the feature, I was teaching at UT, I was I had access to, I, you know, I, I don't come from money, so I was making, I don't know, like 13 grand a year teaching one class a semester. Luckily, my husband had health insurance, but, Thank you. Um, so I had 